Protein is complex because we have 20 amino acids that we have all the time. One of the, the lines I like to use a lot is saying we have a protein requirement is like saying we have a requirement for a vitamin pill. We don't actually need the pill, we need the 12 vitamins that are in it. And for protein, we don't actually need protein, we need the nine essential amino acids that are in it. And particularly lysine, methionine, tryptophan, and leucine are always limiting in plant-based proteins. As you look at plants, certain kinds of plants are more limiting in individual amino acids. So grains in general, wheat and oat, corn are all very limiting in lysine. Uh, legumes like soy and pea are limiting in methionine, the sulfur amino acids. And if you think about protein, protein is consumed in meals. Uh, if you look at mTOR signaling, mTOR is stimulated by a number of things. One of them is protein, leucine, but it's also stimulated by insulin, IGF-1, uh, energy, carbohydrates in particular, uh, and some other things. And so the problem with it is they're ignoring the fact that the animals are overeating too many calories, they're eating chronically 24 hours a day, they have too much insulin, and so they chose to blame protein when in fact it's always an insulin carbohydrate problem. And the issue uh, with protein is we need to eat it in pulses. We want mTOR to trigger, and then we want it to go into an idle phase. Uh, the worst thing you can do is graze all day long and keep mTOR active all day long. Um, anyway, so mTOR has lots of different roles in every different tissue, but in muscle it has a very unique role in terms of, especially in adults, in terms of how we maintain our muscle mass. And it's critical to understand how to, how to keep that balance correctly. What's interesting in amino acids though is while the meal is digested and absorbed, amino acids will pool in the blood and in the free pools for up to like five hours. And so after a meal, you'll have elevated blood levels for a fairly extensive period of time. What's interesting within that is that muscle protein synthesis will only last about two to two and a half hours. So while your meal is still being absorbed, um, and you still have high blood levels, you're actually not getting a lot of benefit to it. So while you're consuming uh, a lot of your calories with the meat for lots of different reasons, as far as a muscle effect, you're way over consuming the amount of protein that you're getting a muscle benefit from. I mean, there's calorie balance and all kinds of things that you can choose to do it for, but one of the things I like to talk about is that there's a range of meal response. And depending on the exact protein you're using, that's probably somewhere between 25 with a really high absorbing protein like whey, up to maybe 55 grams of protein. Beyond that, you're probably not getting much of a muscle effect. So you may get whole body effects. Uh, you may have a larger liver or a larger kidney or a larger GI tract but you can't make muscles larger just by having larger meals. And the two meals that are most critical are your first meal after an overnight fast and probably your last meal, a dinner meal, because they're farthest apart. No one to my knowledge has ever shown a leucine response to a lunch meal. So basically, I, you know, I look at meal distribution as I want to have a first meal and, and then the response range I talked about a little bit ago was 25 to, to 55 grams, somewhere in that range. So for me personally, I want that first meal to be in the upper part of that range. So I'm having 45, 50 grams of protein, not quite a pound and a half of meat, but I'm having a fairly high protein meal and I have the last one. The middle meal, I'm kind of in weight maintenance. So I'm not really looking to gain muscle mass. I kind of don't pay that much attention to my noon meal. And you know, other meals, I, I look at meal s sequences. If you're kind of an adult, happy with your body composition and weight, two meals a day is perfectly fine for a protein. If you're in a catabolic condition like weight loss or you're trying to change your body composition, I think three meals a day is a better choice because you have more anabolic periods. And if you're in a an anabolic period like you want to build muscle, then I think four periods per day. 
but you get only about two and a half hours per meal. And so how many of those do you want per day? <laughs> First and foremost, if you're going to build muscle, you have to have the resistance training. So you have to have the, the dynamic need to increase your mild fibers content. Uh, as far as the nutritional support for it, I think you captured it exactly right. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you have to think about these leucine thresholds. You have to stimulate mTOR. We know that muscle protein synthesis is always running, maybe 35, 40%. But what leucine does is trigger the extra capacity. It triggers certain mRNAs to express, and it's the ones that actually increase your capacity to build myofibular proteins. So it's targeting certain mRNAs. Uh, so it's not like you're going from zero to something. You're going from 40% to 100% max is what's, what's happening. And that can be sustained for about two and a half hours. We don't really know why, but there's pretty much agreement that a meal will only run so long. And what's interesting about that is the mTOR signal is still probably active five hours later, but protein synthesis has pretty much shut back down after two and a half hours. Uh, once you get out of growth, once you get it past your mid-20s, now it's diet quality. So insulin takes on a passive role. Um, Having some carbohydrate with the meal is probably okay, but you'll actually get enough of an insulin response just with the branch chain amino acids. So you can get an anabolic response pretty much just with protein, as long as you have enough calories in the meal to also make it uh, you know, an anabolic period. One of the great things about protein and gluconeogenesis is it's very slow compared to the effect of eating carbohydrates. I mean, carbohydrates, when you eat a meal that contains carbohydrates, that will enter the blood and has to be cleared in two hours, or that's the definition of diabetes. If you're not back to baseline within two hours, uh, that's diagnostic for diabetes. It's a toxic substance. Uh, where amino acids, they will pool, as I said earlier, in the blood for at least five or more hours. And so you're going to be slowly converting that carbon into glucose or fatty acids, ketogenic, uh, over at least a five, six hour period. And so it's a very slow process and very continuous. When you have a high protein, low carbohydrate diet, you actually maintain higher blood glucose in the middle of the night. You don't go into those hypoglycemic states where you wake up starving because you're actually using amino acids to continuously make uh, glucose and the body sort of adapts to that. The thing to always remember is that glucose is a highly toxic substance in the body. It's an interesting thing in that it's an essential fuel for brain, neurons, red blood cells, but it's also one of the most toxic substances the body experiences. And so it's very tightly controlled. But if you have elevated blood glucose, it shuts down metabolism of everything else. First and foremost, you have to get glucose under check. And when you do that, you stop fatty acid oxidation and you stop branch chain amino acid oxidation. And so you'll get a buildup of free fatty acids and branch chain amino acids in the blood, but it's secondary to the excess glucose. You bring glucose intake back down and you'll correct both of those other issues. The way we actually discovered leucine and the branch chain amino acids was actually we were doing a carbohydrate study. We were actually doing it for um, Gatorade. And what we found is at the end of these elite cycle power studies um, was that the branch chain amino acid in the blood dropped like a rock. And we thought, what in the world does that do? And so we then looked at protein synthesis and saw it fell off after these exhaustive exercises. And that's where the whole concept of leucine supplementation and mTOR and EIF4 came from. There have been great 